in the philosophy department, and it's my uh, pleasure to welcome everybody to a continuing seminar that uh, the Bruin Research uh, in, uh, Center uh, has here at Beida. Uh, before I um, before I introduce our speaker this evening, let me uh, say two things. First thing is. Everybody turn off your telephones and uh, all of those noisy things that, uh, that interrupt the speaker. So let's make sure our telephones are all turned off. The second thing is that on your seat there is a card. And uh, Burgruen is, um, is a partner uh, with Beijing University. And uh, because Nobel doesn't award a prize for philosophy, uh, the Bruguerin uh, Institute uh, has done so. So the last three years, we give a million dollar, uh, uh, Yiwan Meiyuan, a million dollar prize to a philosopher, a distinguished philosopher, but it's an inclusive idea. The first year it was Charles Taylor, the second year Honora O'Neill from Cambridge, the third year Martha Nussbaum, you know, somebody that, who does philosophy. But it doesn't, it's not just philosophers, it's anybody who has ideas that change the world. This is what McGruin is looking for. And so what we're looking for is uh, nominations. The nominations close in the middle of June. And so if there's somebody that you think should be nominated uh, from our world here at Beida, then uh, please nominate them. I can see some uh, international students too, uh, uh, philosophers, uh, intellectuals, uh, rather than just philosophers, but from other parts of the world too. Uh, please nominate them. In the fullness of time, we want to, um, uh, to be sure to have Chinese uh, and, and uh, European and, uh, and uh, Asian uh, winners of this prize. Um, having said that, it's my uh, great pleasure this evening to introduce you to Professor uh, Sakura Osamu from the University of Tokyo. Uh, Professor uh, Sakura is uh, the principal in the Riken Center for Advanced uh, Intellectual uh, Project at uh, University of Tokyo. And his work is really very interesting. The, the, t the topic that we're looking at tonight is really contemporary. It's really an important topic. His research is at the intersection between scientific knowledge and human values. That um, what, are, what is the impact of this runaway technology that we, we're encountering on uh, the human experience? Um, when we talk about uh, biological and cultural evolution, He's interested in the cultural differences in public image, uh, the understanding of AI technologies, robots, uh, like science fiction and media, uh, uh, things like that. And in particular, and very interesting, one of the things that we know from the Christian experience is that in Christianity, you have a kind of human exceptionalism. The human being is, is not just another animal. But when we look at Buddhism in Asia, and the concept of the bodhisattva, the bodhisattva is somebody who wants to save all of sentient life. And so there's a different way of thinking about the relationship between the human being and other elements within our, in our environment. And this, this uh, Professor Sakura is really expert in that area. So well, I really encourage you to, to listen carefully and to have some really good questions uh, to ask him because this is really, you get fei chang nan de li ge Okay, so Professor Sakura. Uh, is it too loud? I'm afraid. Too loud. So how, how to? Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. My Chinese uh, is so limited. So I use English uh, this night. My name is Osan Sakura, and uh, thank you very much. It is great honor for me to uh, to be here and have this opportunity to this uh, great great uh, Berlin Institute, Beijing University. 
Well, my talk is uh, entitled is robots and QA and apes and the preliminary approach to cultural diversity in human AI operations. Well, as Professor Rogers introduced me, I'm now the professor of the University of Tokyo and also I'm hired in the uh, researchers in the uh, weekend uh, AIP center. I'm afraid the weekend is not so uh, popular in China. University of Tokyo has a little bit uh, So uh, I prepared the uh, Chinese characters. This might, might be much more uh, easier to understand you. Uh, Regen is like this. In the abbreviation of the Li Ka Gaku Ken Kyujo, so uh, Institute of the Physics and Chemistry established in the 1920s. And the, now the, uh, we uh, focused on the uh, biological sciences. And the, three years ago, so we launched the project of the artificial intelligence. That is the center of the AI. So the, well, uh, Chinese characters is very uh, great. Okay, so at first, uh, this is ukiyo-e. Uh, my talk is focused on the ukiyo-e, or the Japanese traditional way. Well, uh, was our, this is our short description of the, our institute of the uh, AIP. We have the three research groups. First one is the basic focusing on the basic research of development, the uh, technology of the uh, machine learning and the deep, uh, deep learning. And the second group is focusing on the applications, on the how to apply the uh, AI technology in uh, medical sciences and to uh, disaster, protecting disaster and so on. The third group is uh, the, the which I belong to, is focus on the artificial intelligence society. So the many of the, some of the other uh, research team focusing on the uh, issues of the law and the uh, ethics and the regulation and so on and so on. Okay, so the, at first I would like to introduce shortly my, myself. And this picture was painted my daughter uh, some uh, eight years ago for my birthdays. Well, uh, this is myself. And the, uh, she put the uh, chimpanzees just close to me because the, I got the, my PhD in the chimpanzee studies. My background is animal ecologies. I, work, I got my PhD in the study of the animal uh, ecology behavior, social, social ecological studies of the chimpanzees. Then at that time, uh, I believed that the science is, uh, what do you say, uh, objective and uniform all over the world. Science is all the same in the whole world. But I experienced it. It, it, is not, it is not true. It is totally different. A Japanese primatologist, my professor, was uh, described the, the monkey's behavior as quite like the description of the human beings. We called it the anthropomorphism. The humans to see like the, uh, 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 to see the uh, non-human animals like the uh, human beings. But the Western uh, primatologists, especially from the American psychologists, deny such kind of approach. This was not the science. The scientific is more um, numerical and subjective and like so on. So I changed my target from the primate to the primatologist. How the uh, cultural or the historical aspects of the sciences is it, uh, was background, the differences, diversity, and so on and so on. So. Then, uh, during the uh, passing of the time, I changed, switched my focus on the more wider aspects of the science and technology in general. And some years ago, so I focused on the new law ethics, new law sciences, and physical issues. And currently, I focus on artificial intelligence and robotics. So, first step, I started as a primatologist, so my target was the chimpanzees. And the second steps, I changed my target to the planet, or the human beings, and the neuroscience. And my, now I focus on the robots. So my target has de developed and evolved gradually, because that is my history of the uh, academic. OK, today's my talk uh, content, content uh, three parts. The first one is I shortly introduce the basic concept of why we need the cultural aspects of the uh, society. Uh, 
so, so social aspects of the society uh, to, to, to respond to the emerging technology like uh, AI and robots. And the second part, uh, I describe the, some of the, the, the example of the cultural biases between Western and Eastern Catholic society to the uh, robots. And the third part, uh, I uh, developed further my discussion in the more hypothetical words to the, uh, we discuss the uh, uh, relation between uh, our view to the artificial world and our, our view to the uh, natural world. Okay. Well, the, uh, first, I would like to uh, emphasize the necessity of the culture, what he means in the culture to argue about the uh, emerging technologies. Because LC, LC is the uh, ethical and legal and social issues. Uh, this term is quite introduced with the, uh, the uh, emerging of the uh, human genome project in the 1980s or 1990s. The, not only the scientific or technological aspects, the ethical, the uh, social issues are very important. So, the, but the LC, even LC is not enough, I think. So, because the cultural background of these ethical and legal systems are very diversified between several societies. So, uh, I, I would like to emphasize the uh, importance of the focusing, uh, treating the cultural aspects of the, as the background. Uh, to, to the uh, social uh, aspects, the social response to the uh, new technologies. The key concept is uh, social shaping of technology, SSD. That is uh, introduced by the 1980s, uh, some of, many of the uh, uh, social scientists or the technological scientists. But the concept is very simple. That is, uh, the society could, could shape the uh, technology the, the real uh, using of the technologies. So the many of the arguments uh, focusing on the how the AI uh, would impact on the society is how many uh, laborers were lost their works and uh, how which which types of the regulations necessary and so on so on so on. So our our arguments uh, the mainly focus on these directions, which the AI or robots uh, will. Uh, effect on the societies. But as this is social shaping of technology uh, requires the opposite side of the uh, directions. How society will shape the new technologies? How the uh, society will uh, react to these emerging technologies? I will give two examples. The first example is the telephone, invention of the telephone. This picture uh, describes the uh, Graham Bell, one of the inventors of the telephone uh, display, the how to use the telephone. The Graham Bell and the other inventors of the telephones did not imagine that the telephone would be used as a both-way communication. They just imagined the telephone would be used to be one-way direction, one-way communication. When some, someone has accident or someone is in the, the uh, sickness, the medical doctors would instruct how to treat the patients. That was their imagination of the, uh, the telephones. But today, it's nobody uses the telephone in such a way. So everyone, including me, uses the telephone as the both-way communication. That was one example of the social shape of the new technology. On the other hand, the radio was completely uh, the opposite. Radio was invented as the both-way, a tool of the both-way communications. In, 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 in fact, the, some of the European countries and some of the states in the United States in the early stages, the, uh, the radio programs was uh, uh, composed by the, 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 the such a way. The uh, centers and the listeners are supposed to, be to, to make the beauty uh, programs. But, but this way, so we have the, some of the many regulatory regulations to how to use the uh, ways. So the, we cannot use this uh, radio in this way. So this is the, the opposite of the uh, social change of the technology. So the, in the uh, background of the society, the, there is a very big area of the culture. So that is the reason why I need to, to I think that it is necessary to study cultures, to understand the reaction with the technologies and public society. 
Okay, so I will give you some a few examples of the culture bias in humans and the relations of the human between the AI and robots. Well, my my example uh, from the uh, singularity talk. Singularity is a is a technological singularity is quite okay. It's one of the uh, most uh, famous uh, propaganda of the singularity talk is uh, Ray Kurzweil, a future robotist, futurologist in the uh, United States. He published the book uh, Singularity is Near uh, in the early 20,000s. Then he said that uh, machine intelligence will have complete freedom of design and architecture, as well as constant performance at all times. Well, simply, I cannot agree with his uh, statements like this. Why the machine, machine intelligence did not have such uh, freedom? So machine, machine intelligence will have such freedom. So the machine, machine intelligence has their own restriction and uh, constraint. So, and my, my, my Macintosh and the iPhone is I love these machines, but they do not uh, perform in a consistent way. They sometimes freeze, and they sometimes shut down. So uh, I simply uh, do not uh, believe the his arguments. Then he continues that the another advantage of machine intelligence is that it can consistently perform at peak levels and can combine peak skills. Well, I think it is too much optimistic. He believes the performance of the machines in that this way. Here are the examples from the Nick Bostrom's uh, super intelligence. He is the uh, philosopher in Oxford in the United Kingdom. And he, his book is, is focused on the how we uh, should manage the uh, artificial intelligence technologies. Well, he pointed out that the other animals, non human animals, have stronger muscles and sharper claws, but we humans have cleverer brains. Well, uh, this type of the uh, view to the human beings are quite uh, quite popular in the Western discourses. I think that is uh, similar to this this one. Uh, Blaise Pascal's and money is uh, thinking we the money is quite uh, weak things. Uh, in the physical, but we have the much uh, strong uh, mental and uh, intelligent uh, abilities. That is the humanities, the origin of the humanities. And as a former primatologist, uh, I would like to say that this is not true in scientifically. Human ancestors were not so uh, weak animals. Uh, they are quite stronger. They, uh, they, were, they are, they are man, as much as strong as any animals. Uh, one of the examples is not humans, but the chimpanzees. And many of the uh, hair of the pumas, tigers, uh, lions are found in, from the uh, fecus of the chimpanzees. So th that means that the chimpanzees sometimes eat their children, child of the uh, such, such animals, pumas and cats. So. This is one of the uh, one of the evidence is that the human ancestors were not so uh, weak animals in the physical way. Of course, the, the they were not the strongest animals, but the, but not so the weakest animals. Nick Bostrom also uh, continues that not if not every feat accomplished by evolution in the course of the development of human intelligence is relevant to a human engineer trying to artificially evolve machine intelligence. Only a small portion of the evolutionary selection on Earth has been selection for intelligence, that means the human intelligences. But uh, I think that this view to, uh, is too narrow to grasp the human intelligence. They are focused just on the logical thinking uh, the uh, some uh, uh, some ability to the abstraction while using the language, uh, logical reasoning, and so on and so on. So, but these are the, of course these abilities of human abilities are very strong. So 
it's not good enough. But the, uh, these are the only the parts of the human intelligence. There are much more the uh, uh, interaction through the, the uh, environment through body is a very important part of the human intelligence. That is my uh, opinion or feeling. Their, their view to the intelligence of the human ability is quite biased and limited. That, 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 those are the uh, summary of my opinion. That they, they are they are views to the humans uh, that the humans are special creatures and different from other animals. Are quite uh, one of the uh, their uh, views, uh, and they they see that the machines work accurately or mechanically, and the, uh, they also pointed that the human AI relation in binary position on the individualistic. One to one relation for the human relations. These are the example of the cultural bias uh, in the discourse of the singularity or human relations. So these are my working hypotheses. These cultural biases affect on human AI or robot relations and also are reflected on the composition of human AI and robot relations. Oh, in this talks, I do not uh, I do not uh, define the AI and robots definitely. So using just the uh, what, what do you say information, what well, just a rough flexible way. So please don't care the what is AI or each other or so on. This is one of the typical uh, pictures from the uh, Western view to the human AI relations. They, uh, I, I found it in the uh, website, and one of the companies uh, have the, uh, explained the how your uh, life would be if the uh, robots were introduced. Then uh, they described the, uh, this woman and robots uh, conversation, so on, so on, so on. Well, this way is quite typical. One to one communication. They are face to face. The other is uh, captured from the, uh, some of the YouTube or something like that. So, uh, Will Smith, uh, a famous American actor, has the uh, date, dating with the, this uh, robot uh, lady or woman, or I don't think so, to, I, I'm not sure about that. But these films, uh, five minutes or so, that these are always continues in this angle, this composition. So they, uh, conversate with this way, like this, face-to-face -face communications. This is also a typical uh, example. The, this, uh, this is uh, captured from a scene from uh, film Ex Machina, uh, Ex, or Ex Machina, Ex Machina, uh, in 2016 or something like that. But this is a uh, this is not a human evaluation, a robot robot relation, but it's typical to the like this. They uh, composite in the opposite, what do you say in English, opposite way, face to face communication, one to one. But in Japanese pictures, the composition is totally different. Uh, this is uh, one of the famous uh, robot, uh, robot researchers, uh, Hiroshi. Ishiguro uh, in the Osaka universities who make the uh, very similar human-like uh, robots. And uh, I, I think this is a robot and this is a human being. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, like this, both of them uh, look to, 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 to us. They, they are in, in, in this way, not, not to the face-to-face. Uh, -face. This is another example. Uh, this guy names, uh, I'm not sure, Hikaki, Hikaki, one of the most uh, popular YouTubers in Japan. And he introduced uh, the paper, uh, the one of the uh, robots in uh, Japan. And he bought uh, this uh, type of the robots and he opened it and he, uh, he, and he explains uh, what, what is happening, how, 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 so on, so on. Always think this way, not like this. He always is praying to, to, to the watchers like this. 
呃，历史讲的这个种玻璃呃，啊，通过他通通过他把他搞好虚的 ，he's a robot creators， and this is that that is that a little bit different， but the the old the the that do not always use the uh face to face uh compositions like this. So this robot was created by himself, and he watches uh at least he okay or something. So I use the uh, Google search to the uh, my uh, institute in my intuition is to rule out. So I, firstly, I use the English term human robot and uh, relation. And these are pictures, and I type this way and this way. And this is a different. Thing. This is different, but I like this way. So the in using the English terms, uh, my intuition is supported. To in some point it leaves. Then, next step, I use the uh, Japanese terms, human, robot, and relation. They're totally different uh, pictures come. Like this, Ishiguro san again, and like this, like this. So, uh, this is one of the typical images of the Japanese way of the human robot relations. Uh, his name was Michio Okada, a professor of the Toyohashi University of Technology. As he emphasized that weakness is important for the uh, robot to inspire the human robot uh, communications. Well, in the Western way, the robot is always used to, to enhance the human abilities. But that's not the way, he says. For example, this, this is a uh, garbage. Uh, what do you say in English? Garbage can, garbage can robots. But these robots can just move, and they they, they could cannot pick the garbage by themselves. Then, and when he put uh, these garbage can robots in the public uh, public uh, situations, there's some of the uh, infants uh, would pick the garbage and put. The garbage in. So the, this uh, weakness and the lack of the or some abilities could inspire the uh, relation, human robot relations. That is uh, his uh, his philosophies, and I think that is uh, proper uh, originated from the uh, Eastern view of these uh, human robot relations. Well, this is a schema of the uh, robot human robot relation. This is a Euro American. Human robot relations in the Japanese way, like this, uh, today humans and robots see the sum of the third item. Then, so I'd like to introduce the two other conceptual tools to uh, uh, analyze uh, this uh, human robot relations. First one is the viewing together theory, and the second one is the role of the frame of the paintings. Okay, so what is uh, viewing together? Viewing together was uh, introduced by the uh, Japanese Taikai artist Osamu Hitayama, uh, who was used to be a uh, pop singer in Japan, but anyway, he was a Taikai artist. Then, this is quite similar uh, the concept of the joint attention in, in the mother and the infant. Mother and infant can see the sum of the third items together. Well, the uh, these uh, Scheif and Buruna are the uh, developmental psychologists uh, found that this ability is only found in the uh, nine months old uh, children. Uh, but anyway, uh, Kitayama uh, used uh, this concept to, uh, to uh, demonstrate the uh, origin, originalities of the uh, Japanese uh, mother infant uh, relations. Well, uh, Kitayama analyzes the uh, mother infant pairs uh, print, painted in the Uki ways, uh, or, or 200 or something pairs, and he found that uh, about 30% of these uh, paintings uh, describes the mother and infant relations like this. Gazes somebody turned into the others. These are the uh, examples. Uh, this 
one thing is entitled the looking rainbow. So the mother and the infant looking at the rainbow uh, together. Well, this one is a different one from the uh, ancient one. This uh, is chrysanthemum. And this is quite uh, typical uh, that the, uh, they, they looked their uh, images uh, reflected on the uh, surface of the uh, water. And this was uh, uh, painted by the Buddha Marrow and so painting. These uh, looking together was not uh, limited to the ukiyo-e, so some of the films uh, applied to uh, this type of the compositions. This was the uh, famous uh, Japanese uh, director, movie director, Ozu Yasujo, uh, so the uh, story, Tokyo stories, and he really preferred this way and this way. And, and in this way, they like uh, watch. And uh, Kitayama also uh, found that this composition, this look, viewing together or joint attention, was quite seldom appeared in the Western paintings, but West, uh, Western paintings of the Armas and Infant Pairs. Like this. And like this. Um, almost all of the uh, modern infant pairs in the Western paintings are the uh, Jesus and uh, his mothers, but, uh, but, uh, but anyway, it's like this, and like this, so uh, totally the different way they look. So, uh, like this, the Christian. Okay, the second tool is the role of the uh, frame of the painting. Uh, the Japanese, Jap Japanese uh, historian of uh, fine arts, uh, Shuji Takashina, uh, pointed out that the role of the frame is different in the Japanese paintings and the Western paintings. In the Western paintings, uh, the, what do you say, the role of the paint, role of, role of frame is very uh, important because the, within the frame, the, uh, there is a uh, microcosm. So the, all of the uh, his, history and the, uh, all of the stories and philosophy and the views and the events are completed in this, within the uh, frame. That is a, the way of the uh, Western painting, traditional Western paint, paintings before the 20th century. So he called it the aesthetics of the completion. Uh, this is the uh, blue rubies. Peter Bruggen's and the Judgment of Paris. And the, the other example is just the uh, drug, drug wars, the uh, Liberté, the Guitar and the So all, all of the stories and events uh, completed within this. So the uh, microcosm, the, the world within the paintings on the outside is totally different, independent. This is a Western way. But the Takashina uh, pointed out that the, the Japanese paintings are totally different. The role of the paintings in Japanese paintings are not so important. Well, the, uh, many of the Japanese paintings uh, continue inside and outside. Uh, this is the, the one of the other, uh, Ukiyoe from the, uh, Hiroshige. As he, he describes the uh, ferry boat uh, in the uh, Edo. And he painted just the part of the uh, arms and legs of the boatman. So the, his body is and every uh, boat uh, uh, there, uh, here, uh, outside of the paint. So that is the Japanese way of the, uh, describing. So the other example is uh, painted by, oh, I'm not so familiar with uh, Takeji Fujishima. Takeji Fujishima is the early 20th century uh, painters, he uh, applied the Western way oil paintings of the, uh, the, his works. So he denied the uh, traditional way of the Japanese uh, paintings, but he accepted the Western uh, methods, the Western skills, Western paradigms of the paintings. Then uh, he studied in Italy and he painted this is the uh, scene of the Italian, one of the Italian parks, I think. Tivoli, Villa, Desu, Ponta, Islands, like this. Then, so did uh, Takashina. Uh, 
historians of these paintings pointed out that this dropping down some of the plants are quite a typical uh, motif in the uh, Japanese uh, paintings. This is the intrusion from the outside. Then uh, Fujishima so they even uh, denied the traditional way of the Japanese paintings. Maybe unconsciously used this type of the uh, phrase techniques. So that is the uh, traditional of the Japanese way. Well, uh, in this, this afternoon, I found a uh, uh, similar uh, composition. And this is the uh, pond lake of the, uh, I don't know the name of the, in, in this campus, uh, Weymouth Hall. 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 And this is a very nice tower, and it's a very beautiful. This is the same of these uh, droppings from the outside of the uh, picture. So maybe this is common in China. Anyway, so this, this is the answer. Uh, the phrase is, is very important. Their relation is uh, completed within the phrase robots and human beings. And the Japanese way is totally different. And sometimes they include, include to the uh, we uh, viewers. So the, uh, in summary, so in Japanese, uh, in Japanese way, the humans and robots uh, relation for the, uh, I'm sorry, the robot and the AIs are treated for us in Japanese and they uh, partnerize of uh, sharing some triadic interaction. Both the uh, humans and the robots are almost the uh, equal uh, relations, relations, relations for, for the subjective agents. We, we regard the robots and the subjective uh, agents. But in contrast, in the Western uh, way, the uh, robots or the AIs or humans are the partners considering the, the, these are the uh, independent microcosm. So just both of the humans and robots are the uh, pigments to uh, consist the, uh, this uh, microcosm. So these are the only parts of the world. So when the, uh, in the context, the robots or the AIs are uh, Apparently, the uh, uh, less ability for the uh, human beings, so that they don't care about, they don't need to care about that. But the, once the humans and the robots uh, have some the, uh, possibility to uh, more, to be uh, dominant to the uh, human beings, so uh, they don't have. Uh, any, how to say, limitation, because they are just the uh, elements to the consisting of the uh, world. So in the Japanese way, so the humans and robots are equal. Not, not the, there is a uh, dominant support relations, but in the Western ways, so there is no uh, conceptual tools to limit the uh, robots can be dominant uh, human beings. That might be, uh, that is uh, our I guess. So one of the uh, examples to support uh, is my suggestions. Uh, uh, this is the cover, cover of the uh, book uh, entitled The Robot Takeover, 100 Iconic Robots of Myth, Popular Culture, and uh, Real Life, uh, written and read by uh, Anna Metronik, the American uh, photojournalist. Uh, this is quite a nice book, so just introducing many of the more than 100 robots from the, uh, from the uh, sci-fi sci -fi and movies and uh, uh, animes, and we are including real robots. <coughs> well, uh, this was published in from the uh, National Geographic, I think. Well, the cover was like this, the title is Robot Takeover, so robot will take over human beings. And then uh, this book was translated into Japanese. Well, the cover was totally defined in like this way. So the uh, eyeball and the uh, astral voice. And title is also just like this. One of the robots which created the history is so no takeovers. So that is 
symbolize, that symbolizes the difference between the Western and Japanese way to the human robot relations. So. Okay, at the third part, the final part, I'd like to uh, develop my perspective to the more uh, wider uh, in context. Well, uh, this is again the, uh, my result of the uh, Google search using the English terms. And I, I, I'm interested in this, uh, this element. But it's, I remember this one from these this pictures uh, painted by the, uh, Michelangelo, the uh, creation of the uh, Adams. So this is quite similar to it, about uh, human beings. Relations. So, and, and from these uh, compositions, uh, the I, uh, former primatologist, uh, uh, remember that these uh, pictures, the famous uh, James Goodall, uh, the one of the founders of the type chimpanzee uh, ecologies, and she was a, the uh, young uh, English American uh, ladies, and she only solo. Uh, spent a lot of the efforts and a lot of the uh, years to uh, to be uh, accepted as the uh, member friend of the chimpanzees, and the, this picture uh, represented at uh, at, at last uh, she was uh, welcomed as the member friend of the chimpanzees, like this motif is similar to bridging the humans and their groups. So this is my uh, another uh, hypothesis. That the relation between humans and robots uh, quite parallel between humans and apes or monkeys. Robots and AIs can bridge the humans and machines or artifacts because the uh, humans and machines are totally different uh, creatures, but the robots and AI was more similar to the human beings, uh, even if they belong to the machines, but the, they, so the robots and AI can bridge these relations. Apes and the monkeys uh, place us similar positions between the human and animal relations. Animals are totally different from the human beings, but apes and monkeys are quite similar to the human beings, so they can bridge these uh, two things. So uh, this is the American psychologist uh, Colin Patterson. That he, she used the uh, this gorilla coco for the, uh, her experiments. Then this is a similar uh, Western way of the human robots and human creations. So this is the Japanese uh, ladies. Uh, she, she, she was not the uh, scientist, but she was one of the founders of the Japanese primatologist. Then uh, in this way, similar to the uh, robot, human robot way. And this is a Korean researcher in Japanese, Professor Yamagiwa. Now the, he is the president of the Kyoto University, but then he, look, he looks in this way from the Korean side. And he is a chimpanzee researcher, and they look like this way. And these chimpanzees, and he gazed together, doing this, he's looking together, doing it together. So I suppose, I hope that this diagram is correct. I want to say something. Well, in background of this uh, view to the nature, or the view to the machines, uh, existing the, the Eastern Asian view to the uh, natures. The, uh, this area of Eastern uh, Asia is covered with you know, forest, not a desert, or it's not a tundra. And so uh, East Asian uh, view is quite a holistic and harmony oriented view to the natures. And human beings are always treated as a part of uh, natures. This field is uh, uh, crystallized in the uh, Taoism, so the community of humans and continuity of the humans and nature is uh, 
uh, emphasize but uh, don't uh, so the uh, this Taoism is quite uh, shared in the East Asian East Asian uh, area so we uh, we uh, traditionally is quite familiar with this uh, way of the uh, thinking in the Christianity in the Christian uh, way the nature and the human being are totally different in the uh, like uh, like angel uh, painting, uh, the God created the natures and the human beings, and but in uh, Eastern ways like this, human beings are always a part of uh, natures. But one interesting uh, episode when the uh, Darwin's evolutionary theory, Darwin evolution theory, was introduced uh, in the late 19th century by American uh, zoologist. Uh, many of the Japanese people did not uh, conflict with to accept the, the, the Darwinian theories. So the, the, the zoologist from America was really surprised what he experienced because he experienced a lot of the conflict and the opposite from the Christianity to accept the Darwinian theories. But in Japan, even not, not the uh, scientists, in the general public could easily accept the Darwinian way of the uh, uh, continuity of the human beings and uh, natures. So uh, this is quite interesting uh, concept, the techno animism uh, coined by the American uh, anthropologist Anne Allison. Now she is in a Duke University and she studied in pop cultures in the Japan. In, uh, in the uh, late 20th century, it's like the uh, Pokemons and some other uh, comics and animes and so on. So on that she found some uh, animistic way to describe uh, the Japanese way of describing some technologies. Okay, but uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize some uh, caveat. My perspective is present here uh, too much simplified and uh, schematic, so the Western versus Eastern, American Christianity versus Taoism, the Buddhism, so too much simplified. Dichotomy is, uh, we, we should be careful about uh, dichotomies. Uh, well, the, uh, we can easily observe the similar uh, philosophers, similar the thinkers, uh, emphasize the uh, holistic or the harmony way of the uh, natures, and like the Gaia hypothesis or a deep ecology. And the, uh, Kevin Kelly uh, presented the individualistic ecological view for the uh, technology. So we need some more uh, careful or the systematic uh, way of the uh, thinking. And uh, this is the uh, abbreviated from the how to pronounce it, Rietzu. Rietzu. Uh, in the Rietzu, the, uh, one of these uh, king uh, supplies that the very uh, well uh, created the uh, automaton. And then he uh, said that this is quite the, is this similar to the concept of the god or something like that? I'm not sure about that. But in the, even in the ancient China, that, that, that concept was existed. So uh, this is again uh, a direct emphasis that we should be more careful to. To about the type uh, of the Western and the Eastern. Well, so uh, this is a list of the I am planning to do much further. So the uh, I, I need we need more systematic survey of cultural uh, differences. And so uh, I'd like to carry on some comparative researches of the public images of the AI and the robots uh, within East of Asia, including China, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, because uh, I, I we can find uh, some of the several of the comparative uh, researches like this, but almost all of them uh, uh, focus on the just the comparison between Japan and United Kingdom, or Japan and America, and so on, so on. So, if uh, my to 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 complete my view, so we we need some more systematic research is within East Asia, so to, to cover the visit Hawaii's and all the Chinese characters and so on. So that is my uh, second point. And uh, we, I need to do more theoretical considerations of parallelism between 
human-made animations and human-made relations, maybe, maybe using the technologies. No? And the, uh, these are also the, the cultural diversity that we have seen in human-made relations. Well, this is just the, uh, some of the uh, profile guidelines. I am now uh, editing some uh, independent uh, journal, uh, like the uh, entitled Fine Design Media Ecology with few of my uh, colleagues. Uh, these are guitars. And we completely uh, independent. Independent means no uh, financial uh, political uh, support from the outside. Uh, this is not the uh, so academic journal, uh, but it's quite so widely open and to use many things. In volume nine, focus on the new world between people and uh, machines, and we also uh, discuss uh, several other uh, topics. So if you interested my artists, uh, please visit it. visit this uh, site and uh, watch some uh, this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Sakura. Um, he has located the phenomenon of uh, contemporary artificial intelligence, development of artificial intelligence within cultural differences. That is really intriguing. Um, how do Asians Chinese, Japanese look at a development of artificial intelligence. How do a Western people coming from a different perspective look at it? So, really fascinating. So, um, some questions over here. Why don't we uh, pass the. Thank you so much for your talk. I have two related questions. The first of them is about when we maybe unintentionally import cultural biases which are not entirely positive. So with the processes of machine learning now, there's been some examples of where hiring recommendation algorithms have been trained on hiring data that pre-exists on the internet. And in doing so, they've imported cult cultural racial biases towards certain jobs. So when that happens, who does the responsibility fall upon for encoding those less than positive cult cultural biases? And then the second question is more broadly, when we talk about morality of machines, who is responsible for deciding what morality is when morality itself is such a cultural construct? Well, to the, uh, as to the first questions, uh, it is quite uh, big issues for the... Uh, you mean something that the uh, algorithm bias or something like that? So, so which, which caused the some, uh, gender uh, discrimination or the discrimination. racial discrimination and so on. So it's quite complicated and difficult issues because uh, currently the algorithm and the data are in the inseparable. So the, the, the who and which, what is uh, responsible for this result is quite complicated. It is difficult to um, define. So who is the uh, uh, contribute to this uh, bias? Design. So, I think that the, uh, we need more uh, transparency within before uh, the decision of the uh, artificial intelligence. At present, many of the uh, reasons are quite unknown. Black box, like the black box, so we, we need to, to, to open the transparent, to be transparent between what has happened in, in within this, uh, uh, these uh, processes. Um, uh, the second is I we need some more uh, regulations. Uh, it, it is just a problem. Of, it, it's partly it is just a problem of the regulations. Of who should be the uh, more responsible to to, to this uh, result? The uh, engineers or the inventors or some users. This is the uh, problem with the rule regulations. This is uh, my. Uh, Question. So, and the uh, in the second part. So, I'm, I'm sorry. What is the second part? Is it? Oh, when you're if we're delegating mor morality to machines, how do you deal with the fact that morality itself is so different across cultures? 
Yeah, so there are also the uh, difficult problems. So the uh, you can ask who, who who should be the agent for such moral activities? Do you think so? In sometimes the individual robots and AI should be the agents, but at present we are now living in the uh, widely uh, atmosphere, the environment, or the in its territory, the, all of the environments are. Uh, spread between the uh, AI uh, agents, so uh, I think that might be uh, difficult to to focus on the each individual uh, agent to so the fundamental. So we need uh, how to design the this uh, environment uh, should should be be our uh, project. So I'm, I'm sorry I cannot clearly answer your questions, but my concern is how to design the whole of the uh, environment. So that is my answer. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for this um, very interesting talk. Thank you. I have, um, I guess, a question um, that has to do with the, the basic argument that you were making about the difference between the Western and the, um, and the, and the Japanese context in relation to AI. And there you made a point about something about the subjectivity of the robot, and I'm trying to, trying to come back to that. And I was wondering if you could explain a little more what you meant by, what you mean by subjectivity there. Mm -hmm. Because there are different ways in which we can understand the term. The first thing I immediately came to mind is, of course, when you have, in the Western context where you have those pictures of, one, someone getting into a relationship with a robot, like in, in the movie, um, what is, I think it's Ex Machina. There, to get into a relationship, you're almost already attributing subjectivity to the robot, because you can't have a relationship with somebody unless you have a, that, that person has some kind of subjectivity. So it seems like perhaps one of the issues is that there is a different conception of subjectivity. In, in each of these in each of these cases, so one would have to get into what subjectivity means in, in each of these cases, and I, and I think that the the other point you were making that was related to this is that in the in the non-Western case or in the Japanese case, there is less there's more of an equal relationship, um, and this was linked to the problem of subjectivity, but it might be connected to a, a different type of subjectivity. But I was immediately thinking about this in, in historically, right? Because after, in the post-war period in Japan, or, in, or around that time, you begin to get movies like Godzilla, right? And, and there's a sense in which there is the whole discussion around the atomic bomb and so on, which is a similar kind of dystopia of something like science, if not machines, taking over. And I was wondering how you would speak to that. Thank you very much. A very deep and uh, insightful uh, questions. And the problem of subjectivity is very important. On the, as, as I completely agree with you that the concept of subjectivity is, is different between the West and maybe with the Eastern countries. For uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know that much about the uh, non Japanese uh, Eastern society. But in Japanese societies, the uh, peer pressure is very strong. And so the uh, individual subjectivity is, what you say, uh, not so uh, much strong, uh, strong uh, than uh, compared in the uh, Western uh, society. So the, uh, each individual uh, cannot decide by him or uh, herself. His decision, his decision is always concerned with the family members or the uh, some peers in the uh, companies and so on. So the, uh, so the. Uh, uh, Ego is not all belongs to the only individual in Japanese societies. Ego is sometimes shared uh, between the uh, some of the um, uh, what, what do you say in English? Some of the, the groups groups can uh, decide. So I think that that trend is maybe quite similar in the other West, uh, Eastern uh, Asian uh, uh, countries, including China. So the, so that the concept of subjectivity is totally different in the uh, Western and Eastern uh, countries as you like that. So I have no data or no uh, knowledge to develop. So this idea is more further at present. 
So maybe Roger uh, had some uh, comments to complement Africa's that. And the second point that uh, Kojira is a very uh, interesting point, the Afghan uh, world, world was the second in the, uh, the, in the uh, way to see the science and technology is much, uh, how do you say, very uh, big issues for the uh, Japanese societies. At the end of, after just the end of the defeating the world was the second, uh, the, the emperor, Tenno, at that time, uh, sent a letter to these, uh, his son, uh, he said, Tenno, that uh, why Japan was defeated, because the Japan did not, uh, could not uh, manage science and technology uh, efficiently than the Western sciences. So uh, the, the one of the most important uh, issues for their post-war Japanese societies is how to create and manage the science and technology by themselves. So, the, so the, the, I think that is one of the reasons why Japanese government are so eager to uh, develop the uh, uh, nuclear power uh, stations. And the uh, car, car engineering is also very important. And the, uh, many of the uh, Electronic uh, steps in the uh, daily lives uh, is very uh, development. So, but this is always the uh, uh, pros and cons. And so, we always, yeah, we human beings can not always manage completely the technologies even without developing technology. So, uh, Japan's failure failed to the uh, manage the nuclear power. That is, that, that is a very big issue of some. Well, well, Richard, do you have some many comments about the, the, the uh, sub subjectivity is the difference between this and this? Yeah, it, it's clearly a brilliant question. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I think you, your answer was perfect, and that is Japanese, you have shito no, shito no aida, ma, ningen, these kinds of ideas. Um, a Chinese relationally con constituted conception of person is really different from the kind of individualism that has deep roots within the Western tradition. And so you have a, a sense of diffusion uh -huh. that, that a person is located within, uh, in, in English, I would say, everybody, please stand up, everyone, please stand up. If I speak Chinese, da jia qing jian qi lai, you know, shi fu, xue jie, xue mei, you know, the, the idea of a, a family. And so subjectivity is more, kind of relational subjectivity than uh, individuated, discrete, isolated subjectivity. So I thought your answer was perfect. Thank you. Yes, maybe I can ask uh, one first. I think the way that, um, I think that the way you show robots that are different in, in, in Japan and, and in the United States uh, remind me of uh, the way we, we're seeing the world in, in, in China, Japan, and, and the States, actually. So, I'm not really um, familiar with Japanese society, but I should learn more on that. But in China, this is how a human child is actually growing up. You, you have a mother uh, who told you, look at that. You, you, uh, that is something like this. And this A is composed of B and C. So we're we're actually observing another uh, object through through actually the eyes of our mothers and fathers. So this is why actually in, in China and I believe uh, to some extent in Japan um, that um, that actually the human child is learning the cultural and the world through the eyes of their family. Uh, well, in, in the Western society, it's like when you talk to your child, and the, the most important question that you may ask is something like, what would you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, so last week, um, uh, uh, I have a friend, uh, the, the president of AAAI uh, from, uh, uh, from University of Southern California, Professor Yolanda, she said uh, she had a six-year-old um, girl and there's one day that uh, a boy said, can you marry me? Uh, so uh, the, the question that Yolanda asked of her uh, daughter is, what do you think? It's not like, well, in China, you will be 
how stupid can can he say that? It's just crazy idea. Live along with, you know, you, you cannot really talk to him again anymore. So this is pretty much the, the, the Chinese mother would like to say to to her daughter. So the, the what do you think uh, idea is something like, uh, I'm gonna have you to have the observation of the situations and the, the way you're observing the world and the, the boy that might be crazy, that might be truly love you. And then, and then, um, the answer from the um, from the daughter is something like, okay, um, if you can create a robot exactly like me, and then I can marry you. So, through uh, uh, the voice of a six-year-old um, daughter. So Yolanda got crazy in a way that you never take a course in AI and robot. Now how can you have that statement like that? And then the daughter says that, oh, come on, mom. mom, I know you're working on artificial intelligence, but there is no way that you can create something like me, exactly like me. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, you know, marry him anyway, uh, but, it, it, but I, I think he can spend like a lifetime to actually create something like that. And then uh, after that, um, he would not really like me. So, so this is the way that they're, they're interacting with the world uh, uh, in a position of, of what do I define myself as, as, as me, uh, what I would think. Um, but I think the, the joint observation of objects or, or teaching uh, through interaction uh, through other eyes you know, is quite... Is, I wouldn't say it's quite, uh, it's quite Eastern, uh, but that's my observation. So I think in this way, um, I think we have a robot which, is, um, which can be related to the human being, uh, but they can have their, uh, their own viewpoints. So in this case, if we're having robot, if we are having a standard life uh, of that form, um, so shall we interact with the robot in a way that, how do you see the world? How do you see us? It's not really told them, this is the world, and this is how you should see the world, how you should see the nature. So I think if the robot can really learn human empathy, I mean cognitive empathy, and fear of mind. And then they have an initial model uh, for the interaction with the world, with the concept of self, of the robot self. And then they should have their, they should partially have their own way to interact with the, with the, with the world. That's my general comments. It is not a question, but it is a comment. Uh, very good comments. Uh, so yeah. he is a, a yeah. specialist in robotics, too. Yes. So it's a very interesting yeah. comment. Yeah. Uh, down at the back, please. I was wondering, because at one point you were mentioned that, I think you said in Japan, the robots should have like some sort of weakness, or like this is sort of an ideal. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that, because I think it's very interesting, especially because you were uh, quoting Bornstrom or something, like the Scandinavian uh, scientist who claims that if there's more and more AI development, there will be maybe this singularity or at least this very complex AI that's going to destroy human and human beings, which I always thought is highly implausible because usually like less intelligent uh, creatures tend to be more violent and more destructive. I'm, I'm curious about this notion of weakness oh, in the... Yeah, thank you very much. So it is also the comments. I, I agree with you. So it's quite similar to uh, his uh, comments that the, uh, the point uh, about how to create an AI, so how, which world, uh, the which, uh, which world, with which society we should develop and realize. So the, that, that, is the, that, that should be the first starting point that we uh, discuss about the human AI uh, innovations. That is my opinion. So I completely agree with both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Um, just now you mentioned that the further study may be about the difference within the East Asia. And so uh, I think as for China, I think the concept and technology of robots and AI are from Western world. 
So, so I think how we understand the relationship of human and robot is deeply influenced by the Western culture, like the movies and comedies. So I, I think, um, uh, just as you have mentioned, the diversity of culture is a very important factor of how we understand the relationship between human and robots. But I think the communication of West, Western and Eastern culture is also a very important point. So um, that's my opinion. I, I don't know what, what do you think about that. Well, uh, also, thank you very much. A very uh, deep question. But the, uh, yeah, as you say, that many of the uh, science and technology is introduced in the Western the society, the same in the uh, Japan also, Japan and China. All, all of the, the other non Western uh, countries introduced the Western uh, way of the thinking and science and technologies. But the, uh, these uh, the cultures and activities, as what you say, multi layer. Yeah, what, what, what do you say? So the, in, that is the reason why I mentioned on the, this uh, ancient uh, Chinese uh, vision to the uh, artificial things. This is the very, very ancient old, old ones, the, much long before the Western cultures came to the uh, uh, China. The China itself has these types of the view of the philosophy to, to, to how to uh, treat with the um, artificial, uh, like the uh, automata or the uh, robots. Because th these types of the uh, cultural, uh, cultural uh, uh, bodies of contents we have, then the Western technologies and uh, cultures that come. So the, the uh, present culture and the present society are very complicated. So they complicate a lot of different routes. So we should be more careful to divide which parts of these uh, uh, reactions to the uh, came from this uh, ancient China and this come from the early Western and coming on so on so on. So the, sometimes we we may cannot uh, divide it is very 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 complicated. But anyway, so uh, that, that 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 is my, my point that we, all of us uh, all of our cultures are not from the uh, Western. All of our cultures are not from the uh, East End. So th these are uh, very mixed uh, complications. So th that, is the, uh, that is one of the reasons why uh, we need to do more cultural aspects to the uh, scientific and technology today. Recently, in you know, Tenpo in Japan, there was like a robot uh, guard, which people, uh, people kneel down to. And uh, I've also seen some artworks from Japan that uh, such as um, robot fortune teller or um, or robot uh, um, or, or when 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 your family dies and you put a robot instead of um, your family to like commemorate them. And besides that, in in the U.S. or also in Silicon Valley, uh, there was a guy invented an artificial intelligence church and it's a website. And uh, recently, uh, the Stanford University Press also published a new book about uh, automatos, like robots, in ancient Greek, uh, which uh, there was a line saying, uh, uh, in, if uh, you um, go against with machines and robots, you are against a god or something. I think it's kind of against your saying that um, Humans are uh, humans. Uh, machines are partners with humans. So I want to know your thoughts on this uh, phenomenon. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I cannot catch uh, the point of your question. So you uh, did you ask me the uh, can machine uh, completely uh, replace the uh, such human relation? Uh, in your talk, you said. Um, Machines are like partners with uh, machines are partners with human in Japan. So, but I, I put some like uh, examples against your saying. So I want to know your uh, thoughts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, so the um, well that might be depend on the uh, meaning of the connotations of the partners. What, what are the partners? So the uh, we. Usually, so the uh, one of the uh, 
example is the Aibo, is the robot uh, dog, robot companion of animals, right, much, much more popular in the all over the world, especially in, in Japan. So the, but uh, of course, many of them realize that this is not the real dogs. This is a difference. But so they treat it as something like the uh, real dogs. So it's quite difficult to how they or we should treat as the uh, robots as the uh, partners of the real lives, real human beings. So, well, I'm sorry, I did not uh, answer the, uh, clearly, but it depends on the interactions between the uh, such uh, artificial things and the, the uh, subjectivity. It does not depend on the totally the uh, characters of this uh, subject. This whole, this is this is caused by the interaction between the us human beings and the uh, such uh, actual uh, things. So many of us, many of us uh, may deny these are as a partner. So the, the others may be accepted these as a partner. So does it make sense to you? So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Maybe later I'll discuss about that. I want to ask you about something called Matzinger's um, prescription, which is basically like, if we make AI human level intelligence, and we make the interactions between humans and our AI more complex and more realistic to certain cultures, do we then inherently require a treatment of human level AI that is human-like? So by introducing the scope for emotional and moral interactions with humans, into a machine's operating frame, should you also introduce the right, the right of those machines, especially if you're introducing the ability to suffer with those machines? So by increasing the level of human-AI interaction to a point where it's realistic to human-human interaction, if you're introducing suffering, do we firstly want to be introducing more suffering into the world, if that requires machines being able to suffer? And should we also then give machines the right to emancipate themselves from that suffering? Well, um, I do not agree that the, uh, we should uh, give the, some of the right to the uh, AI or some of the robots or the actual things. The uh, AI and the robots are the uh, always kind of the uh, actual things are tools. So the uh, the uh, point is the, which types of interaction, the systems that we create the human and AI interactions. For example, the uh, airplanes are very complicated uh, tools, but the, uh, the uh, airplane, many of the airplanes are automatically uh, 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 fly, but the, uh, at some point, the, the, there, there remains the human responsibilities. The responsibility is always to attribute it should be attributed to some of the human agents or the human individuals or the companies and norms, but the uh, machines uh, cannot be responsible for the uh, some such kind of the uh, activities. So the, even the AI and the robots are developed in, in, in some ways, but, but this is always the machines and the uh, uh, artifacts. Uh, we we should treat them in. Does not make sense to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if, if you design a machine that has emotive intelligence, you're yep. introducing the scope for that machine yep. to have some sense of, say, suffering. Like, let's say, even if you just have a human that's having a conversation with a machine, and the machine is intelligent enough to be make autonomous decisions over what yep. sentence it says next, yep. what if it says a sentence that upsets the human? Should you then, if you grant a machine the ability to suffer, should you also, I mean, I'm talking like 100 years down the line, grant that machine the right to end its suffering? Uh, well, so the uh, argument is based on the if uh, we have uh, such uh, uh, conditions, it's quite uh, different. So even in the uh, current uh, situation, some of the uh, auto drive cars uh, has, has uh, caused some uh, accident. So is it uh, the uh, machines or some uh, regulations? Or it's quite, quite different uh, questions. I, I cannot answer uh, your questions. It should decide by the like, public argument. If, if the, if the self-driving car could essentially say at some point, 
I don't want to drive anymore because it means that I might have to make the decision to hit someone. Should, should the machine have the optionality yeah. to not operate anymore because yeah. it might suffer from it, yeah. the decisions it can now autonomously make? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, well, the, uh, in the, uh, theoretically, it's up to the uh, human being. So human, each individual can decide the, uh, with which options. So that is the idea of uh, legal situations, I think. One, one last question. I just want to bring that question to the real life. So say today in Japan you said you already have um, the machine dogs that people love to pet them. What if people bully these dogs? Has it ever, ever happened before? And what would the society do to... Will they actually protect the dogs as a dogs, as animals, or they are just our tools? And so you can do whatever you want to do to the dogs. You, you, to, you, the, to the machine dogs. To machine dogs. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Has ever happened in Japan because a lot of people would have them already, right? Yeah, yeah. Has anyone bullied a machine dog? You know, destroy the dog. You know, I'm not happy today. I just want to bully this dog. And what does the dog have with its own rights? Or is it like we treat it as a machine, so you can, you know, I can smash my computer if I like. Well, uh, well, uh, I'm not sure. Right? In the private life, the how the owner treated the uh, each uh, machine dogs, and then it will be possible. Uh, something can kick the dogs and uh, some their bodies. And I'm not sure about that. But the uh, when the maker uh, Sony uh, decided to stop to continue to uh, provide the uh, each uh, uh, each parts of the, uh, the such uh, robot uh, dogs. And many of the owners protested uh, the, because the uh, it, such uh, robot dogs uh, sometimes destroys and doesn't work. And so the uh, if the vehicle it does not provide the each uh, parts, so the uh, they cannot survive uh, anymore. So the many of the owners protested. But but anyway, the uh, Sony decided to stop to provide the uh, each parts of the uh, each machine. So uh, many of the uh, owners of the, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, ceremony to the, uh, the funeral um, of the, like this. So they, many of them treat it, it's like the uh, real uh, dogs. And the, again, so I don't know that it's, they really uh, treat as a completely the same uh, living dogs. I don't think so. But the, it's like the quite similar to the uh, treatment or the relation with the doll, doll, dolls, human dolls. Some of the dolls are very uh, affinity relation, cause affinity relations to some human beings, and some of the different. So it, it, it's always the uh, result or the product of the interaction between subjective, subjective human beings and objective machines. So, it's not the uh, only. It's not, it, we cannot uh, contribute the uh, what will happen. The what is happens always the uh, subjective. These uh, characters. It's not the problem of the subjectivity. It's always a uh, problem of the interaction between the uh, subjective and the sub, sub, no, subjective and objective. It's not the problem of the objectivity. I think it's not the project of, of pro problem of the pure objectivity. So objective subjective interaction is cause such uh, phenomena. I thank you all for coming and please join me in thanking uh, Professor Sakura. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any more questions, just come on up.